Hello, it's Ruby. Last week I went to Hay Festival and I just wanted to make a video about it basically and share some of the things that I learnt, that I did, that I, the books that I bought. It's a massive book festival which happens in Wales every year. It takes place in Hay upon Wye, which is a book town. It's got 22 bookshops in it. 22 bookshops and it's a tiny town it's wincy it's like every other building is a bookshop in central hay and for somebody who loves books who loves secondhand book shopping um who just loves being around books it's the perfect place to go so if you are a bookworm um it's definitely somewhere i would recommend you visiting and one of the great things about having so many bookshops near one another is that they've all got something distinct about them um because they need a way to differentiate themselves from the other bookshops i suppose and so for example there is a bookshop which is entirely secondhand poetry there's also one called murder and mayhem which is only murder mysteries and that just makes my heart very happy they also have so many of the like orange penguin classics um i bought a few and i will show you at the end of the video and actually i'm gonna get up to show you this so for my 18th birthday my grandparents got me this book so it's just here on my bookshelf it's called book towns and they said to me that these were places that i would have to try and visit some point in my life and one of them is of course hay is in here if i can find it hay and why this is it so of course i read this before i left and honestly it's just so cool to be able to tick off one of the book towns in this book as well but that's hay what about hay festival hay festival runs every year at the end of may like during may half term and they have so many speakers and authors there and obviously readers and bookworms there as well but honestly the lineup of authors was astounding and i was not expecting it to be quite so impressive margaret atwood was there and I will get on to that in a second because I want to talk to you about some of the talks I went to. So um, the festival lasts for 14 days, but I was only up there for four nights, which actually was the perfect length of time. I really did enjoy the festival and I really enjoyed being there, but I'm quite introverted and even though it's a book festival, it is still kind of full on. I was there with TikTok and um, so I was spending a lot of time with people. My social battery does get quite drained and... I think it would have been quite overwhelming to have been there any longer than four days so that was the perfect length of time and if you're thinking about going up next year I would say that four days or like three days is probably the perfect amount but I travelled up from home to Hay. It was actually a really long journey and it took like seven hours because of train strikes but um, it was fine because I had my book to read and on the train I read Three Men in a Boat and also River Poems like from Everyman's. Both were really great. I think it's quite obvious that I've just had a shower. Excuse the fact that I'm filming with very messy hair. Um, but this also is a really great opportunity for me to say that Three Men in the Boat is the book of the month for June for the book club that I run over on Fable. I mean, I say I run. With the book club, it's all about community. It's all collectively run. Every month we choose a classic which links to the month and the season that we're in. And Three Men in the Boat is set at the beginning of summer. So it felt like the perfect one for June. So if you want to read the book, and join the discussion then there is always a link to the book club in the description box anyway i'm gonna get back to the video it just felt like too good an opportunity not to mention it and then i got there and i immediately met up with my best friend blakeney who i hadn't seen in months because we live quite far apart we were able to spend the evening together and we went and got pizza and it was honestly just the best start to the trip so i've got some vlog clips now that i'm going to share with you the clips are very chaotic and as i say i just thought that i got more footage than i had i was obviously getting too excited by just how many books there were. Hello, it's Ruby, and I'm currently here at Hay Festival. Well, not currently, but I'm in Hay, and I'm gonna head over to the festival now. I arrived yesterday, and Blakeney's here. We um, were able to spend the evening together, and it was so amazing to see her, and I'm in this amazing tent. Like, when they said glamping, I was not expecting this. Like, it's a fully raised bed. I'm gonna show you. So this is the room. The yacht was made in Mongolia, the girl was saying. And it's like a proper bed. And then there are bedside tables and there's this old steam trunk and there's a mirror. And I was very impractical and brought these suitcases with me. But it's nearly nine o'clock and the festival opens at nine. So I'm gonna go over there for when it opens and um, probably head to the food court and get something for breakfast, go and get some coffee and just read somewhere 
for a little bit. I want to go to the Margaret Atwood talk at 10. So every day before the festival started, I would go into the main tent, get a cup of tea or maybe a coffee and read my book. At the beginning of the week, I was finishing Three Men in a Boat, which by the way is really funny. It's also very male as a text and the way that Jerome presents women, they are not characters, they are little dramatic devices. So that's my main qualm with the book, but it is also funny. Then I headed to the food court to get some breakfast. <laughs> And I'm just waiting for a chat. As I mentioned before, I was actually here with TikTok. And so if you're wondering, this is the TikTok space, which was set up so that we could create content. And they had so many books on these shelves. I added probably 50 books to my TBR literally just from this room alone. So then during the day in here, there was so much to do around the festival. So one of those things is talks. So here was the talk between Margaret Atwood and Rob Delaney. It was a problem in comic books drawing an invisible man. They'd solve it with a dotted line that no one but us could see. Us with our snub noses pressed to the paper, the invisible glass between us and the place where invisible men can exist. The shape of an absence in your place at the table, sitting across from me, eating toast and eggs as usual. In the afternoons as well, I would always meet up with Blakeney to get lunch. As you can imagine, I did so much book shopping whilst we were there. So one of the days I went down into Central Hay and spent a couple of hours just wandering around all of the 22 bookshops. Honestly, this was so tempting and it took a lot of willpower not to spend all of my life savings on books at this festival. I'm also so grateful that because I was there with TikTok, there were so many people there that I knew online whose content I'd seen online and I was able to meet them and spend time with them and that just felt so special because we all live in such separate places and so it's amazing that the internet meant that we were able to meet in person. Here we all are as well, uh, trying to take a photograph on the steps of the castle. Now you've already seen the food court but this is where all of the food stands are and all of the walkways are lined, there are spaces to fill up your water which I love and then in all of these tents that's where they're doing talks and there are maybe five or six things going on at the same time. There is also an Oxfam bookshop um, with lots of secondhand books. Most of the good ones had gone by the time I got there though to be honest and then this is the biggest pop-up bookshop in Europe which was beautiful. And then I just love all of these deck chairs outside where people were just sat reading. There were just, you just walk past and everyone was reading and it just made me happy. So one other thing I wanted to talk to you about in this video too is um, the talks that I went to. I saw Margaret Atwood and Max Porter speak, uh, not together, though that would be such a good combination. And I was actually like fangirling so much at both of these. I mean, being in the same room as Margaret Atwood, being in the same room as Max Porter, like literally it just made my heart so happy because I admire both these authors so much. Of course, you know who Margaret Atwood is. She wrote a book which is in like my top three books of all time, which is Cat's Eye. And actually like the talk that I went to, it was in conversation with Rob Delaney and both of them were talking about grief and the 
power of memoir and kind of the cross-section between memoir and fiction, which is so fascinating, something that Jeanette Winterson actually looks at a lot. Cat's Eye, I mean, because of the preface to the book, I had a vague impression of like, it's maybe semi-autobiographical, that maybe there are elements of truth within the narrative, which map onto Atwood's own childhood. But hearing her speak, she, and she didn't speak specifically about, about Cat's Eye in the conversation, but hearing her speak, there were a few things she said that just kind of made me think, okay, actually, maybe this book was kind of more based on her own upbringing. I mean, in the book, Elaine's father is an entomologist and Atwood's father was an entomologist, which I did not know and I find incredibly cool and it makes me want to go back and reread Cat's Eye, but with all of that in mind. But the conversation itself was really moving. So Margaret Atwood recently lost her husband and Rob Delaney lost his three-year-old son um, a couple of years ago. So both of them were talking about grief and what the relationship between writing and grief is, you know, why is writing useful and what does writing do and it was just a really interesting conversation and also just for reference if you ever see an advertised talk with like the two of them together they work so well together like you know how sometimes in like a broadcasted or uh presented conversation there is just a very good energy between two people that is definitely margaret atwood and rob delaney um which I wasn't expecting. And the second talk which I loved was Max Porter's talk uh, kind of conversation about his new book, Shy, which I did buy. Got about like 30 pages left. It's so excellent that I don't want to rush it. So I haven't read it for four days because I just want to be like in the perfect headspace to finish this. I know not everyone relates to that kind of like way of reading, but let me know if you're the same because I really have to be like in the mood for a particular book, especially if it's one which I'd been really highly anticipating. This book is examining uh, boyhood, specifically toxic masculinity, um, depression, mental health, the pressures which are put on young people, but specifically teenage boys. It's heart-wrenching. He's so experimental in his fiction and he's really trying to conjure like an experience through process of reading it and so there are moments when you're reading this and you actually do start to get really kind of like panicky because of the writing style uh which is actually incredible that he's able to do that but the conversation that I was listening to was just like he's incredible like i love max porter when i saw the lineup max porter was the one i was most excited for because lanny was like my favorite book in 2021 i just think he's brilliant but in person He's even cooler. There was such a great energy in the space and everyone was on the same page as him and everyone like loved what he was saying and I actually had to take out my notebook halfway through because he started just, he, everything he was saying was just so wise. One of the main points of this book is to emphasize the importance of the welfare system and having a welfare state where we do have access to like national health care but specifically mental health care where people get the help that they need so the book is set in the 90s so as to like displace the conversations which are being had but essentially and this is what the conversation turned into when he was talking it's a critique of how the government today is handling and changing the welfare state and everyone in the room, room seemed to be on the same page and everyone was like clapping him when he'd say something and it was just like amazing and if you can ever see him speak then you should. One thing I really loved which he was talking about was uh, kind of the anger which comes with youth and when you're young you recognise that there are problems in the world and you want to do something about them and then young people are criticised or um, told off for being angry when actually older people should be more angry. He was, was also talking about like the banality of hope and how hope in itself isn't enough, like you need to be actively doing things. I also really love what he was just saying about writing as a whole. So he was talking about um, how he loves to cross genre, where, you know, it's like part play, part, um, part novel, part music. And honestly, it came through so well because when he was doing, he opened the talk with a reading and he is a performer. I'm sorry, Max Porter is a performer. I thought you were depressed. Are you taking your meds? Shy. Shy, headphones off. I'm sorry, but in another life, he is the lead in something on the west end it was just basically brilliant finally just to end this video i'm going to give you a haul of the books that i got so i didn't get as many books as i was anticipating but i did still get a few and i did get the max porter and i didn't tell you it is signed max porter signed this book i saw him and i wasn't going to go over and i was getting so nervous didn't want to go up but then after about 15 minutes of deliberation um, I thought, no, I'm just going to do it, and I'm so glad that I did because he was so nice, and he signed it, and he did a little drawing at the top as well, and 
This is one of my most prized possessions now, this book. So um, the other new book that I got, all of these are from secondhand shops in town, but um, the other book I got is Yellow Face by Rebecca F. Kwong. She also wrote Babel, which I loved back in January. I would say I actually preferred this to Babel, which I wasn't expecting. I have already read this. Um, I read it on the train back and it's, excellent. So this is about an author uh, who dies. Her friend, friend, who narrates the book, takes the manuscript that she's been working on, like takes it from her typewriter, it's just been finished, and she takes it and then she publishes it under her own name. The book is very rooted in like the publishing industry and like problems in the publishing industry but specifically looks at questions around race in publishing it's so good then i got the last tycoon by f scott fitzgerald again i've already finished this uh this is the last book that he wrote he didn't actually finish it though and it really shows because it's not as polished as his other books then i found this orange penguin paperback of brideshead revisited which i borrowed from the library when i read it and it was so good that I wished that I bought a copy, so I saw this one for four pounds and I thought I will just buy it um, because it's beautiful. And uh, I also, oh my gosh, I don't know how I managed to find this. For three pounds, F. Scott Fitzgerald's Gatsby. I am just actually like flabbergasted that I found this. And my edition of Gatsby is the one I had for A-level and it's really ugly, so I'm very glad to have this. And I also got The Grapes of Wrath by John Steinbeck. Again, I don't know how I managed to find this. I was very lucky. I can't remember the name. Was it Gre Green Ink Books? I'll put the name on the screen. Uh, they said that they get asked about whether they've got this book, like, every day. It's in the top three that they're asked about, and so I was really lucky to find this. And I haven't actually read this, so I can't wait to read this this summer. And the final book I got is On Friendship, Penguin, Great Ideas books, and I collect these, and... This one is second hand, it was £3.95, I've been meaning to buy this one so I'm really excited to read it. But that's all of the books I bought, um, I hope that you enjoyed this video, it was a bit eclectic. This is also your sign to go to a book town, or a book festival, this summer if you can. Anyway, thank you again for watching and I hope you have more than just a productive week.